The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Uh, So at this time, we want to officially welcome our podcast audience. We want to welcome our YouTube audience uh, and those that are watching either live or via by the replay of this, however you may be watching this. Today, on this Saturday edition of our podcast, we're going to be dealing with, are we seeing more harbingers unfold in America? Before I get to the, the meat of this, of what we're going to be talking about, I, I definitely want to um, give you a little bit of a, a backdrop of why I'm even discussing this and what does this mean. Um, I want to go back to the dreams, the sequence of dreams that, uh, that has been, that's gone viral. And that was from Pastor Dana Culverstone. Uh, we touched on this subject a few weeks ago. I actually spoke to, to uh, the pastor from Kentucky on the telephone. We spoke to each other for about 20 minutes or so. I just wanted to get a, uh, just talk to him a little bit, uh, get a feel of his heart. Um, we communicated. He, it turns out that he has been a follower of our ministry for quite some time. Uh, and we just really just discussed some events going on. And I know you guys wanted to get him on to the broadcast and he is wanting to still come on. And I, and I do still want to get him to come on to the broadcast. Um, so we're working on that and we're working on a, a date uh, and, and to try to get that scheduled. But in, in the meantime, one of the things he talked about in there, there was several things he talked about that we discussed either in blog form or by verbal, by here, by podcast or Facebook or however you may be watching this or listening to this. He had a series of dreams. And in those dreams, he saw, uh, he saw trouble coming to America. He saw everything from trouble coming to uh, the hospitals. He saw this virus that would come that would infect uh, that would cause a lot of these uh, a ripple effects. He saw schools closing down. Um, he saw uh, there would be a shortage that would come to our currency. He saw foreign troops that would come onto U.S. soil. And again, all these dreams happened m- months ago. This wasn't just, you know, last month. His first dream that he had uh, was, I believe it was back in January or February, and that's when he saw uh, the, the events where he saw the calendar and it was, it was f- flipping through and he saw certain events taking place in certain months of the calendar. Uh, but what I thought was interesting, and I discussed this among some personal friends of mine, that it's interesting that we're now beginning to see unfold some of the things he talked about. One of those things was he talked about, in, he had a dream that, he went, I believe he was having a yard sale for a missionary work and he went to try to get some coins or some change. And uh, a banker told him that he, she was not permitted to give him change because there was a shortage. And she went on to tell him that it started, it would start with change and it would end up getting ones and fives involved and it would cause what, what was called super inflation or it would cause a, an inflation uh, to, to, to come about. So it's interesting that he had this dream and then shortly thereafter, we now hear this, all this talk about a national coin shortage. Uh, banks are telling this, retails are telling this, grocery, grocery stores are telling this, Kroger, Walmart, different places. If you go and you don't use correct change or you don't use a card, you can't even, you can't make a purchase uh, using uh, currency, change. So I thought that was very interesting. So then there was another thing uh, that he saw, and he saw Russian and Chinese troops on U.S. soil. Now, of course, over the years, many people had dreams of this. In fact, there was uh, some prophetic voices that had saw invasions coming from foreign nations such as China and Russia. So this is nothing new. But then again, he just kind of recirculated that or touched that nerve on that, on that same thread. And it's got the attention of people. And we're going to talk about that that today in today's segment. But before we get to that, there was two events that just, just took place that I thought was interesting because it's made, uh, it's made a lot of chatter online, blogs, YouTube, Twitter, social media, and these were both weather events that took place in America that some are looking at um, to actually be harbingers. 
And, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you that right now. And let, let's get into that. And, uh, and I'm going to bring up here, um, the screen so you can see this. I want you to see what I'm talking about here is, is I, I'm going to read you some stuff here and I want you to just look on the screen for me here on, again, if you're watching this by YouTube or by Facebook, you can see this. If you're listening by podcast, um, I'll, I'll describe to you what we're showing you here. Uh, this event right here, um, recently, a few days ago, there was an intense lightning storm that took place over New York City that resulted in lightning striking Lady, Lady Liberty. You could see it right here on your screen. And this was abs uh, actually captured on video and film. Uh, again, light, a lightning bolt came down and struck the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of freedom in America. And it struck the bottom of it or the, the base or the foundation of it. Now, it's interesting that the Statue of Liberty is a statue or it's a monument. And we're in this cancel culture right now where monuments and statues are being targeted. They're being ripped down. They're being taken down. Everything from civil rights uh, leaders to different figures to, to some even U.S. presidents being removed, statues and monuments. And now um, there was a new report that circulated that even statues of Jesus Christ. Now we know uh, this is an assumption or insinuation of what Jesus actually looked like because, again, uh, none of us here knows really what he looked like. So I'm only telling you a description of what we know as a traditional descriptions, monuments, statues of Jesus Christ around the world are being, uh, are being attacked or they are being pulled down. Catholic, uh, many of these are uh, connected to the Catholic faith, the Methodist faith, and different ones around the nation. And we reported on that. But nevertheless, this intense lightning storm struck New York City, resulting in lightning being captured, striking the base or the foundation of the Statue of Liberty. You see that on your screen. Then we had a, an interesting event that just took place. The, a second event, these are recent events, guys, within the last week. The second event was a series of powerful thunderstorms that recently besieged Washington, D.C. Again, where? Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas. On Thursday night, so this was only a couple days ago, there was an intense storm that produced lightning that lit up the night skies, prompting some to even speculate whether the gods, plural tense, and I'm only reading you a, uh, an article excerpt here from RT News, okay? Some speculated that whether the gods were angry or if an alien invasion was taking place. This was, this was being circulated. Some even say it was yet another, quote, prophetic harbinger indicating troubling times in the days ahead for the U.S. According to the National Weather Service, the severe, severe thunderstorm warning was issued for Washington, D.C. in the midst of a spat of extreme weather across eastern, the eastern seaboard of the U.S. in recent days. Eyewitness video uploaded to social media captured the ferocity of the terrifying tempest. According to RT News, quote, Footage of the Capitol being bombarded by bolts of lightning from above prompted jokes and GIFs galore on social media. As apparently avid film fans speculated about angry gods attacking aliens, time traveling terminators, and appending natural disasters. And again, among many in the Christian circle of harbingers. And again, that is a, the word harbinger there is basically, it's a term used for a warning or a, or a speculative omen of, of things and troubling things to come. This comes, listen to this, this comes only a month after a freak lightning storm. How many remembers this? Uh, we reported on this on Intel Headlines as well. A freak lightning storm struck the same region in Washington resulting in lightning striking the Washington Monument. That should be popping up right there on your screen. That was an actual lightning bolt that was captured on video and again on film 
This lightning bolt struck, struck the very top of the Washington Monument. By the way, that is the same monument that was affected by the, the rare earthquake that struck, I believe it was in 2011, in Virginia that actually cracked at the top of the Washington Monument. So again, these are, uh, many say, th because of the locations of these events and because of what the lightning is striking, a symbol of the freedom of liberty, uh, the Washington Monument, the Capitol, and different places like this, that, it's, that these are harbingers. Again, I'm only telling you, this is what's circulating on Christian circles. You can take it as you want. You can uh, receive this however you want. But I, to me personally, I think this is very interesting to, to say uh, the least. So keep in mind, we have all this going on, okay? Then we are, as at the recording of this, it is July 25th. We are almost into the month of August. When we get to the end of the month of August, going into September, on the Hebraic calendar, the Jewish calendar, we enter into a very, I call it a very dangerous time uh, in the world, not just in the nation, but in the world. Um, it's a, I call it the danger zone, and it's called the season of Teshuvah. Uh, or the season of repentance. This is that 40-day window. I don't have the dates. I, sh I should have pulled it up because I didn't really know if I was going to get into this or not. But we'll do another segment because we do this every year. We talk about the season uh, of repentance or, or Teshuvah on the Hebraic calendar. And we'll pull them up. Um, and we'll show you that there's a 40-day window where there is a space of repentance that nations have. Uh, nations that are committing adult, uh, idolatry, nations that are committing abominations and wickedness and, and all these things, such as, again, the example in the story of Jonah, where Jonah was sent to the city of Nineveh, and he was told as a messenger of the Lord to bring a message of repentance. And it was actually, when you study out historically, it was during this time frame of Teshuvah. And he gave them a message, he gave them a warning, and he said that there would be harbingers that would come as a sign to repent. Are you listening to me today? To turn back to the living God. And we know as a result, the people repented of their sins and God found mercy upon them. I believe with all my heart that, we, that uh, if there was any time that you want to say that we're in a danger zone in America, it's 2020. Come on, can I get an amen from somebody out there on podcast, Facebook, or YouTube? 2020 has been one of the most craziest, tumultuous, unpredictable, uh, chaotic years that I can personally remember in living history. So if there was ever a time that a nation such as America should repent and turn back to God, how many believes it would be this year? Uh, okay, so now I want to go back. That was the first half of this podcast broadcast here. Now I want to go to the second half, and I want to go back to Pastor Dana Culverstone. I want to read you a quote that he had. This is a quote from his dream that he had. Now this this, these events took place after November. Okay, I want to read this. Quote, I, listen to this. I saw monuments. Hello? I saw Washington, D.C. burning. I saw Washington, D.C. blazing. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. Now, listen to this. I want you to clean out, clean out your ears and pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. I saw, not me, but Pastor Culverstone, I saw Chinese and Russian soldiers on the ground. The Russian soldiers would tell the Chinese soldiers to go, quote, pick up these people, secure this quadrant, secure this area. I saw blue helmets of the United Nations. I saw military things taking place. I saw no sign of President Trump. I saw no sign of leadership in Washington, D.C., end quote. Now you say, well, 
Brother Ricky, why is that important? Again, when did he have these dreams? It started back in January, February, and then it was recently, I believe it was in June or so, that he had these, these most recent dreams where he said, I saw these foreign uh, troops on U.S. soil. Let me just read to you, and let's just talk about some events that coincide with what he saw, I believe, that could be footsteps leading up to this. Let, I want to get this one out. One of these I didn't even put in here um, that I, I want to, I definitely want to talk about, and that is uh, the fact that uh, there was a report of, hold on, I'm trying to pull this up, guys, so we can have a point of reference. There was a report recently, uh, U.S. officials has come out officially and warned that there is a high probability, listen to what this preacher is saying today, that there is a high probability of a conflict coming between China and America in the next six months. I'm going to say that again. I, I don't know why I overlooked that. I should have put that in my notes, and I, but thank the Lord that it got brought to my attention because it is out there. You can research it yourself. You, High-ranking officials in the United States have come out and warned that there is a high probability of a full-fledged conflict. Now, is that military conflict? I can't answer that, but listen in the next six months, within the next six months. Then the recent news came out. Quote, State Department orders China to close its consulate in Houston. China vows retaliation. A recent report indicated that China has vowed retaliation after the U.S. State Department confirmed uh, this past Wednesday that, US, that the United States had ordered China to close its consulate in Houston and this was a report according to CNBC and Beijing threatened countermeasures unless Washington immediately reversed its decision. And now we know that Washington did not reverse its decision. The latest that late, this comes as further escalations of political tensions between the world's two largest economies continue. Uh, State Department spokesman stressed that the directive to close China's consulate, General Houston, was made to protect American intellectual property and the private information of its citizens. China reportedly condemned the decision, warning of firm countermeasures if the U.S. fails to urgently rescind the order. And again, they did not. The unilateral closure of Chinese consulate general in Houston within a short period of time is an unprecedented escalation of its recent actions against China. Wow. Listen to this. According to UK affiliate The Sun and other sources indicated that Russia recently enraged the West and raised the threat of a full-fledged space war by test firing a weapon, and I think we got a little picture for that, test firing a weapon designated with the intent to knock out enemy satellites. Now, that brings up another report that recently came out that, that's been going on for years, but it was recirculated, new, uh, new information, new intelligence reports are saying that the U.S. is fever, feverishly working to prevent, prepare, and to, uh, to mitigate a, an attack on U.S. soil involving a electromagnetic pulse bomb or an EMP that would be released by a China or Russia. Some even fear North Korea or Iran. But again, it's interesting that here's Russia that recently, again, this was a couple days ago, guys, fired, test fired a weapon designated to knock out enemy satellites. The Kremlin's military push to use weapons in space puts, quote, U.S. and allied space assets at serious risk, according to the U.S. Space Command that has warned, while its U.K. counterpart said it risked peace in Earth's orbit. 
U.S. Space Command said it had, quote, strong evidence that Russia conducted a non-destructive test of a space-based anti-satellite weapon. This is the first time the Americans have publicly accused the Kremlin of carrying out an anti-satellite weapon, uh, weapons test in space. It said that on July 15th, an object was fired at speeds of 400 miles per hour into space from a spacecraft uh, labeled Cosmos 2543, which itself was described as having birthed like a Russian doll from its mother's satellite. Um, Again, this is a very intriguing. Let me give you one more story that just recently came out, and then we're going to close this, uh, this podcast today, okay? Here's a story that just came out from, again, uh, this was from the Daily Star. Uh, there was other sources that reported it as well. China and Russia, hello, China and Russia are both developing autonomous drones with the potential to, quote, kill without any human involvement. I want to say it again, China and Russia, the same two nations that Pastor Dana Culverstone saw in a dream, the same nations that others have seen. I myself had a dream that you guys, many of you guys have followed us for some time. You've heard me talk about the dream I had all the way back. I believe it was in 2015 where I saw a full-fledged invasion took place from Russia by air and by sea. And I, and I, I talked about that many times. Other individuals have seen things. Uh, 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 I can't remember top of my head, just different William Branham saw a series of visions and then the last vision he saw, he believed, was uh, the U.S. being attacked by a nuclear war. So it goes on and on and on. So uh, just different prophetic voices and prophets and, and seers and different ones who hear from God and, and have dreams and visions and, and, and so on and so forth. They've all talked about this. But China and Russia, both, again, by this new report, have developed autonomous drones with the potential to kill humans without any human involvement. By the way, drones are being used in the United States of America that were built by China with the intent of uh, tracking down individuals targeting them through infrared heat sensors and different technology that these drones can see these individuals that have fevers that are infected with COVID and they detect them and they snap a shot of their face and it can be given to the proper authorities. This is what they were doing in China when they were going through and doing mass quarantine and they were using drones to round up people. And the, the, these drones were equipped with the technology that could read people's temperatures. Think about that. Read people's temperatures from like 150 yards away. They had megaphones mounted to them where the government officials can, can, can give people instructions and, and yell at them or, or round them up in the streets. And these things are being used in U.S. cities in different places up north. These same, same technology, drones used from China. You can research it. We talked about that here on End Time Headlines. Now, I want you to stop and think about this for a second. These are drones used for uh, social tracking for coronavirus with infrared uh, heat sensors and megaphones to, to round people up like cattle, to speak to them, commands, to tell them to go back home, go back into quarantine, get out of the public square. But he, here we, now we have China and Russia developing drones that can autonomously kill individuals without any human involvement. Uh, no doubt that are fueled by artificial intelligence. How frightening is this? In the wrong hands, what could possibly go wrong, right? U.S. military chiefs have warned about this. Pentagon leaders in charge of America's military applications of artificial intelligence claim both countries are ignoring all ethical limits or considerations regarding the use of such drones and technology. Artificial intelligence is increasingly being used in both civil, civilization, 
or I'm sorry, civilian and military operations. The comments came from an acting director of the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, according to a Pentagon transcript. Quote, I'm going to give you this, and then we're going to close on this segment today. Quote, we know that China and Russia are developing and exporting AI-enabled surveillance technologies and autonomous combat systems without providing any evidence of adequate techno, uh, technical or ethical safeguards and policies. Uh, this was again uh, by the, this was a report from this acting director of Joint Artificial Intelligence. He went on to say that China's use of AI for domestic po policing issues such as censorship and facial recognition and warned of many military applications which are causing alarm. So again, I just want to do a really quick recap today on this segment. If you're listening by podcast, we thank you for coming on. If you're watching by Facebook, thank you for coming on and YouTube. Guys, before you mark off some Kentucky boy who's a pastor as a nut job because he's had some dreams and marking other people off that's had dreams. Open your eyes, do some research, look around, look what's coming down the pike. Look at the military tensions, look at the economical tensions, trade wars, political wars, uprisings, protest civil unrest. There's militias rising up right now in the United States that are saying they're not playing anymore. And they're going to take action. Okay? So, again, what's going to happen in November? What's going to happen in September? I don't know. But what I am telling you is, if these things are harbingers and they're warnings of things to come, is anybody paying attention today? Are we going to ignore these things? Are we going to be the sons of Issachar discerning the times and the season which we're in? Are we going to be the religious blind Pharisees that keep their heads buried in the sand? Are we going to be the people of the time of the days of Josephus the historian and the destruction of the temple in which there was supernatural harbingers taking place on the in the air or in this in the in the cosmos and on the ground we're talking about the temple doors open and shutting on their own we're talking about strange lights that were seen over the temple in different places of jerusalem we're talking about there was a, a red heifer that was spotted for the first time in so many years there was all these strange harbingers taking place and consequently they all took place before the destruction of the temple in 70 a.d and the prophets were sound in the alarm they were warning the people but the majority of the people were sleeping they were content they were complacent they were uh they were not their eyes were not open and those that were listening to all the to, to the to the warnings they were shunning them as babble as fear mongering come on are you listening to me somebody today come on the the voices that were on the firing line the the watchmen that were on the, on the wall those that were sounding the alarm of that day were all marked as crazy they were all marked as nuts they were all marked as fear -mongering mongers and so on and so forth and and listen the rest is history we know that the destruction of the temple took place in 70 AD and I got news for you according to my bible there's coming a time in the future that Jerusalem shall be invaded again but this time it will be held, it be, be headed up by a man that your bible calls the antichrist he will invade the temple he will set his his headquarters up there he will declare himself as god and listen the the Bible says that people will wander after the beast. I believe with all my heart, you're not going to convince me. Otherwise, I believe that all these Jews that are mystics over in Israel, that keep saying that the, the Messiah is here, the Messiah is coming, and all these signs of the quote-unquote Messiah are happening. I believe that this Messiah, that because they're not born again, they're not saved by the blood of Jesus, they're not in covenant with God, therefore I believe they are going to be greatly deceived, and I believe believe that this Messiah that they're trying to usher in and our generation could very well be what Paul said in Thessalonians is the man of perdition. 
And I could go into the book of Daniel. I can go into Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. I can go to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and different passages of the Bible and tell you that when this man comes on the scene, guys, what we're seeing now take place and all the trouble and the turmoil and how crazy it is, this is a drop in the bucket compared to what's going to happen in the days of the Antichrist and his arrival. So here's the question I've got for you today on podcast, YouTube, or Facebook. Are you right with the Lord? Because listen, you can say, well, I don't care about that, Brother Ricky. I'm not worried about it because I believe in the rapture of the church. I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. And I believe before it gets real bad, shh, I'm out of here. I'm going to be caught up in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. Well, guess what? Not to split hairs theologically here, but I'm on board with you. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I believe in that we're going to be caught up in a twinkle of an eye. But here's where you and I may differ. I don't believe, and I'm not naive to, to, to actually believe that things won't get worse and things won't get bad. And and before he comes and gets us, that things won't get that bad and bad. In fact, I believe the opposite. I believe that people are going to be shocked. They're going to be stunned and they're going to be dumbfounded at how many things that we, the church, will actually be here and witness and experience before the coming of the Lord and before he splits the eastern sky. That's my belief. You can believe me or not. But here's the key. Here, you ready, guys? Here's what it is. Here's what it comes down to. Whether he comes and takes us in a moment and twinkle on now, or whether we're going to go through some stuff and, and we're going to have to shed some blood or whatever the case may be, the key is to get right now. Don't put it off. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. I want to pray for you real quick, those that are watching this, and, and by Facebook Live, YouTube, and podcast. But before we do that, guys, I, I definitely want to... I want to share some stuff with you about our ministry, how to keep up with our ministry, how you can keep on board uh, to with the with our ministry and things that are going on. Endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. That is going to be our main landing page. That is going to be our main website. That's where you're going to go. That's where you can subscribe. And that's where you're going to get, uh, when you subscribe to it, you're going to get one in uh, in. One digest, I'm sorry, one daily digest that's going to be sent to your inbox every single day that's going to have all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. And you say, well, my email is full. I don't need any more email. Well, good. We've got an alternative for you, and it's called our app. Our, we have an official ETH app. There it is on your screen by Facebook and YouTube. You guys on podcast, go to our main website, intimeheadlines.org. You're going to see that uh, place over there. You're going to see where you can sign up. Uh, where you can click on, click on where it says get our official app or get the ETH app. You click on it, it's going to take you to a page where you can click on Android or Apple. It's that simple. Get it on Google Play or get it on iTunes. Just look for that official ETH logo that you see up there at the top. Uh, you look for that, type in end time headlines and you're going to see it Download it. It's free. And once you download that guys, it's going to be in the palm of your hands. Everything's going to be on there. The podcast will be there. The YouTube station is going to be on there. The news, the information is going to be on there to keep up with our ministry and what we're doing. And as always guys, before we sign out today and pray for you, we always want to, we want, we want to give you an opportunity if you've been blessed by this uh, ministry on a weekly basis, a continual basis, maybe it's been a source to you of information, revelation, and transformation. If it is, and you've been blessed by this ministry, and you want to do your part in helping us remain strong and continue to remain strong and support us, you can do that by a one-time gift. You can go to the app. If you've got the app, click down and go all the way to the bottom to the right. There's going to be a place that says donate. Click on that. It's going to take you to an electronic page. Same thing on the main website. If you click on it, you're going to see places you donate. Click on there. You can give electronically or you can give by check or money order. And you can do that. Some people are old school and they like to do that. Uh, by check or money order, and then that's fine. Uh, but you can give a one-time gift or you can become a monthly partner. Whatever the Lord puts in your heart, we don't twist your arm. We don't manipulate. We All we say is whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you do what God is uh, telling you to do and speaking to your heart to do, and God will bless you in return. Amen? And, and God has done that. Uh, so for those who wish to give by check or money order, we do have a new mailing address uh, for you. Most of you guys know this by now, but we moved our ministry headquarters 
from the state of Indiana to the state of Georgia. We are now in, uh, we're located in Monroe, Georgia. That's where our base is. Uh, End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, that is Monroe. For you guys on podcasts, it's M-O-N-R-O-E. That's Monroe, Georgia, 30655. Again, that is uh, where you can uh, give by check or money order. That is our physical mailing address. If you wish to give by check or money order, you can do so uh, by uh, going to that address. So, all right, guys, I want to pray for you real quick. And maybe this is your first time joining us and you say, I don't know the Lord. I don't have a relationship with the Lord or you're away from God. I want you to pray this quick prayer with me real quick. And we're going to let you go on this weekend and we're going to bless you and send you on your way for this weekend. And we'll be back next week. I want you to put your hand right here on your heart. If you can do that, if you can't do that, I just want you to close your eyes. If you can't do that, I just want you to pray your own prayer. I don't want you to repeat anything after me. Sometimes I do that, but today I don't feel led to do that. You need to talk to God, pray your own prayer. But I'm going to just say something like, Father, forgive me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for doing things my own way. Forgive me for trying to do things my own way. I ask that you'd forgive me, that you would cleanse me of all unrighteousness, that you would come and wash me by your blood, that you would wash me clean and that you would give me a new start and a new beginning. And I pray that you would come and live on the inside of me through the Holy Spirit, and that you would guide me, lead me, and reveal to me your truth of your word day by day. Lead me to a strong Bible-centered, Holy Ghost-filled church and a pastor that can lead me, feed me, and equip me, and, uh, and show me where I need to go. And listen, if you prayed that prayer, and you mean that, then God will bless you. He'll honor you and you'll be saved and born again. And you may be watching this and say, well, Brother Ricky, there is no churches around here. Then listen, we welcome you to the family. If this is your church, so be it. If you get blessed here, fed here, equipped here, then I'm honored to, uh, to be your pastor and to help you and strengthen you any way I can. We do devotionals. We do these updates like this. We don't always do prophecy. We do encouraging, uh, equipping messages and edification or edifying messages. So we're just, uh, we try to be a well-balanced ministry, a full gospel ministry that hits every angle, not just one side. So um, again, we welcome you to the family either way. We love all you guys that are newcomers. We love all you guys that are, uh, that are, uh, the, 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 that are, that are family that come on here week after week after week. We see your faces. We know your names and we're honored that you guys call us your family. Some of you, I'm honored that you call me your pastor and I do not take that lightly. And I try to, to honor the Lord with that the best way that I can. So we love you guys. God bless you. May his countenance shine upon you. May he bless you a thousand fold. May he keep you, protect you and guard you in all your ways coming in and going out. And until we see you guys uh, next week, uh, I pray that you have an awesome, blessed, and safe weekend. God bless you guys. We'll see you then.